We saw in the last class different different uh, building blocks of microprocessors. Okay, the combination logic circuits, the sequential logic circuits, and we saw also memory and its addressing. Hmm. So in this part, now we'll start putting together everything to construct a microprocessor. We'll start off with some small primitive microprocessor construction, and then uh, we will look at um, how these instructions are executed inside a microprocessor okay so we we have in the last lecture we have seen the um, operation of uh, transfer of data from external register to the memory okay what are the sequence of things that have to be happening for different different pins uh, that will carry out that operation okay now how this operation can be done by using some kind of a timing and control circuit we'll introduce that here and then proceed for like introducing more and more kind of a uh, you know functionality to this microprocessor and uh, get a glimpse of uh, what uh, how things are happening inside okay so here the idea is uh, to kind of um, uh, introduce you to the basic fundamental understanding here uh, for the timing and control circuits and uh, the basics of microprocessor um, instruction sets and things like that architecture instruction sets everything yeah? and uh, then based on this you will be able to understand the modern microprocessors and microcontroller data sheets in much much kind of a better fashion okay that's how uh, we have um, you know introduced these lectures here okay so we'll proceed uh, with uh, first with the um, the the example we saw in the last class. So you uh, just recall this that uh, you know we had this uh, sequence of operation to be performed uh, for getting the data from the external register A now to be uh, transferred to some uh, uh, memory location where the that memory location is indicated by this uh, address which is on the address bus here and that address is stored in this uh, uh, register called MA. So uh, the sequence of operations would go uh, something like you know you need to have this uh, output enable for MA going high which will ta take the data from this register and put it on the address, uh, address bus. So when the, the data is, uh, the address bus has some kind of a data that particular location in the memory will be addressed now. And then uh, you want to uh, make this uh, enable this chip select and uh, you know this uh, so so that this this particular write operation is 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 enabled. And then uh, we have this uh, valid data to be there on the data bus. And uh, then this operation, uh, this writing of this data here will be done. So so how do you get the data on the data bus? To same way like you know you made output enable pin high and then the data from the register A will be now available on the data bus. Okay, so this will be captured in the timing diagram as we have seen in the last class in this kind of a fashion. Okay. So uh, you see that uh, here this is output enable for uh, memory address and then there is output enable for uh, data register. So, so you know that now these are the like numbers uh, some kind of a sequence that is there in which the operation needs to happen. How would we get this operation done now uh, by by some kind of a uh, circuit or logic circuit. Okay, so we make use of some sequential logic for this. So, let us understand first uh, uh, you know suppose you have uh, some different problem given here. Okay, so how do we generate this sequence of, of, uh, of these pulses which will light this bulb first then this light this bulb and then like this bulb and this bulb like that it should light in a sequence like s1 s2 s3 and s4 okay uh, so so they they need to be uh, on for a while and one uh, once s1 goes off s2 should get uh, lit up okay so that's what we want to do so how, how do we do this okay so if you just scratch your memory a little bit and see our sequential logic circuits which we have seen there is one uh, example there which will help you uh, help us here. So if you recall uh, uh, thing and then proceed. Okay, so yeah, it is a 
uh, ring counter ok. So, so this in the ring counter you introduce this uh, uh, sequence like you know 1 0 0 0. So, this state is 1 here uh, which will have introduced all others are 0 and then uh, in the next clock cycle that 1 will come here and then uh, in the next clock cycle it will proceed here and if you have this feedback which is coming like you no know, uh, so this is continuously this sequence will go on in a loop 1 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 0 and 0 0 0 1 hmm. mm -hmm. will happen for s 1 s 2 s 3 s 4 in the loop and that is what we want uh, for these li lights to be um, uh, lit up in the sequence. Okay, the timing diagram for so this such kind of a case will look something of this sort. Okay. So, S 1 is lit up first, then S 2 is lit up after that, once S 2 goes off then S 3 is lit up and S 3 goes off, S 4 is lit up and again S 4 goes off, S 1 is lit up again okay. and then this, uh, this continues in the, in the clock. Okay. Uh, so, now uh, if, uh, if you want to you make use of this uh, sequence to realize this data transfer operation for external re register to the memory that is what we are talking about. So, we see the care see the timing diagram again carefully for the operations that we want to do and then uh, now we put this S 1 S 2 S 3 S 4 in some, some kind of a time sequence here ok S 1 S 2 S 3 S 4. So, yeah, so there are these 4 kind of a uh, um, timing zones which we have mapped here and uh, in that like no, we know S 1 will go high first then S 2 will go high then S 3 will go high and then S 4 will go high. This is what is going to happen in time for, uh, for us now ok. So, now how do we use make use of this S 1 S 2 S 3 S 4 going high in a sequence to execute like what we want here. So, remember our inputs are this W E C S and address bus and uh, output enable ok. So, these are the inputs which we need to provide some kind of a proper signals to this input. So, that our operation happens in a way that is governed by this timing diagram ok. So, let me get a pointer right. Um, so, now uh, think about this ok, what we, we need to do ok. So, this combination logic we can use on S 1, S 2, S 3, S 4 to produce this appropriate output which can be connected to this O E pin here or O E pin here or uh, C S pin and W E pin here ok. That is what we want to do ok. So, how do you think about uh, so say if you go back and see your S 1, S 2, S 3, S 4 all 4 cycles this address bus has uh, valid data which is coming from uh, making uh, O E for the memory address to be high ok. So, we we or this inputs S 1, S 2, S 3, S 4 mm, they are odd with each other to produce some output that output will be connected to, to uh, this output enable of memory address. Then all the sequence uh, all S 1, S 2, S 3, 4, S 4 uh, durations your memory address will be holding uh, the address bus will be holding uh, valid address ok. So, that is how when we can think about. So, like that you think about for other uh, pins what is a combination of S 1, S 2, S 3, S 4 to be used and then proceed. So, you can see now uh, th that this circuit is going to look something of this sort. Okay, so, you have S 2, S 3 connected with OR gate here, S 3, S 4 connected with OR gate here and then uh, you see that uh, in S 2, S 3 sequence, uh, S 2, S 3 sequence you will have uh, uh, this, this will be S 2 and S 3 sequence like uh, th this will be happening S 2, S 3 are here. So, this part will be happening ok. So, this will be done to the chip ok and um, S 3, S 4 sequence you will have this valid data here ok. So, so one can see that uh, by using simple kind of a like that uh, the sequence of pulses going high one after other and uh, some kind of a combination of these uh, mm, uh, those pulses in the uh, in the in the combination logic way we can achieve the task that we wanted to do. Okay. So, this is one of the tasks that we, we had. Now, the, the question is like many such tasks can be performed now, one can see that easily. Okay. So, um, we can put together many different different kinds of elements okay, 
uh, as we, what we, whatever we have seen combination logic elements uh, adder comparator or this many different kind of possibilities are there okay and many uh, sequential elements also can be there and then we can put together all these to build now our microprocessor uh, unit okay so uh, how do we this uh, this work with uh, like now we'll see with the example okay so so we want to have uh, um, a microprocessor which will consist of uh, some te some temporary registers okay uh, and some memory hmm? then uh, you can put in some combination logic circuits to do some some uh, additional uh, so addition subtraction operation logic uh, output operations okay all those kind of things uh, can be put together uh, and then uh, we will need a, a timing and control circuitry the way we had these four pulses coming up uh, you know similar kind of a timing and circuit uh, to to execute this desired task okay so we will see one with uh, some example of uh, actually put together this okay so this is a primitive microprocessor architecture that is shown here so see this micro microprocessor architecture or microcontroller architecture will typically given in this such kind of a diagrams and uh, these different different registers there is a data bus then uh, the registers will have some functionality that is given in the data sheet of the microcontroller mm. this data bus uh, this this kind of a thing tells you that the data from this register can be written and read also okay but in the register t the data is can be only uh, given as an input one cannot read the t, t register like that you can read this kind of a diagram okay and you have a memory a small memory available in the microcontroller this memory address register holds some kind of a address uh, and then one can address this uh, memory okay something is there then um, you you have uh, some uh, this is only adder here so this uh, this uh, this adder is taking value value in the register t and value in the register al and this is adding together and this this value is available in this register and when you this put this output enable pin high for this register then that uh, added value will be available on the data bus so, uh, things like that so you can have only this one way kind of a direction uh, coming the the data is coming on this data bus you cannot write in this register otherwise okay like that uh, some some kind of understanding can be built for uh, by use by reading such a kind of a diagrams similarly you will find these kind of diagrams in 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 many modern kind of a microcontroller data sheets and one one needs to kind of figure out uh, have have ability to figure out what these diagrams really really mean hmm? so that that can be done now with this understanding that we have uh, done so far and by uh, reading the data sheet of the of that microcontroller okay so uh, let's proceed with the, with some some operations here now okay so this is our understanding uh, of uh, this microprocessor and uh, suppose we we connect now some 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 signals like you know same s1 s2 s3 s4 huh? uh, in in this fashion okay and i'm i tell you okay well, now can you just guess for such a kind of a diagram what is the operation that will be happening okay so read this carefully like you know, how this s1 s2 s3 s4 are connected uh, to this and and they are going in the same sequence high okay so s1 will go high first then s2 then s3 and then s4 okay so you can pause here for a while and figure out like you know a little bit at least to think about okay what will happen uh, in s1 sequence for example what will happen in s2 when s2 goes high hmm? so like that you can think uh, and then you can proceed we'll go one by one uh, in the in the understanding okay so let's say s1 goes high okay so when s1 goes high the contents of this uh, uh, register ma okay which are always there on the uh, so so see this this has no output enable nothing so this is al always connected to this uh, memory so contents of memory uh, register this um, memory address holding register will be available on the address bus there that is there for always then when s1 s2 goes high this uh, s1 goes high in this thing that the, then that this uh, chip select will happen here and then um, this memory will be selected okay now this um, memory is getting selected and and then uh, the the data from this will be available on the uh, so the data from this will be available on the on the data bus 
okay so uh, data which data is available data which is at a location uh, which is governed by this address here that will that data will be available on the on the data data bus okay then um, uh, then what like what else is happening that data is this this is right here okay so when s1 goes high that data is also getting written in the in the register t okay so the data will be fetched from the memory location and it is given to the register t so there is a clock that is uh, kept here okay to make sure that uh, you know this clock signal is 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 given along with s1 so s1 you remember it is uh, half uh, uh, this s1 is goes high for a full clock cycle and uh, this when it is ended with the clock this output will be only half cycle up okay this is done to kind of uh, um, make sure the there is no clash of the data uh, or the 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 write operation is completed well before like you know this uh, uh, the data gets invalid on the data bus so that there is no clash of the data so some 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 nitty gritties of that sort are are uh, are done which you don't need to really bother about okay so uh, now let's see what is happening in s2 okay so that's what we saw why do we need and get here and then uh, yeah so now when when s2 goes high you can see s2 is here and s2 is here okay what is happening here is uh, again something is getting written here okay what is getting written uh, so see this is output enable for this a register so a, that is going high this is or gate that is going high that means data from register a will be available on the data bus now okay so you see the data bus is same data bus is shared in in all different um, registers and memory and so and so forth okay so so the data from a will be available on the data bus and it is written in which register now it is written in the al register okay that is, is happening in the in the second part of the sequence s2 okay uh, so so you remember the first part the data from the memory was available here and uh, was transferred here now then the second part like the data from the uh, register a is going to get transferred here hmm? then what will happen in 3 s3 goes high you see that this data from this uh, this is now added together uh, this is the data which is uh, data in the register t plus al will be added together and that data will be available now on the data bus okay now which register that data is written that data is written in 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 register a again so whatever was previous content it is overwritten and like you know that addition will be uh, available here okay now uh, that is what is uh, done here hmm? and then uh, what is happening in the s4 sequence you you take this data which is uh, uh, from from s4 register now it is put again on the data bus and in s4 it is now write enabled and like that data is is return to this uh, memory okay so um, so this is how like you know typically you can you can see that the the, the sequence of operations is going to happen there are some nitty gritties that uh, we need to figure out and and things uh, things like that but uh, this is this is giving you some kind of a sense of okay oh this is how like you know some things connected together this some operations can be performed hmm? and uh, we know that these operations are uh, has not great meaning here okay so one can have the summary of these operations which are achieved in different different state but uh, you can see that okay this some kind of a successive addition is performed here on some data but uh, it's, uh, it's not a greatly meaningful kind of a thing okay and also uh, suppose we have this microprocessor this will be only doing this there is no uh, other command that is to be we cannot write any command that saying that okay oh, this is my I, my program and uh, i want to have like you know, something done like that or i have to want to have some instruction set which will which will control this kind of operation nothing like that is there right now okay so we want now to have such a kind of a facility we we build some uh, more stuff in the in the thing okay so so uh, we 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 add some more registers to our primitive microprocessor and like you know, look at some more operations with this uh, microprocessor too 
okay so this is a microprocessor which is having now like you know a lot more number of registers but still that additional uh, addition uh, alu is there so there is uh, there can be many different uh, uh, you know um, logic elements that can be used in alu uh, to arithmetic logic unit to kind of uh, perform many many different operations one can now guess that you know this is very easy to see that okay we can have lot of things put, put together in in our um, alu you can have some some uh, counter or other kind of a things also put as a part of this uh, microprocessor unit mm. uh, <coughs> so now um, what we we need to uh, introduce here is is uh, we have in, like notice here we have introduced some some register called pc register this is like a program counter register okay so this will keep track of uh, which instruction you are you are um running at at present okay so you have some sequence of instructions that are <coughs> typically written as a program that that's what you write when you write a program right you write some first command line second command line like that you write this and one after other they get in, uh, executed okay so so this program counter register is a special register which will keep keep track of that count okay that it will uh, it will fetch the instruction first whatever that you have written that program Uh, it will fetch that instruction and it will like you know put that into instruction register is other kind of a uh, facility that is there so this is a special register so these are all there are all some special registers having some special functionalities okay in the in the in the microprocessor so 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 typically you will have this kind of a uh, not all registers can be accessed by a user this is a, a typical very typical for any micro microprocessor you can address say for example this program counter register you cannot write anything into that okay you can just read from the program counter register to to see like that you will have in many in every microprocessor some kind of a you know, special registers will be there and every registers will have a, uh, some functionality and that functionality will be written in the part of the data sheet you don't need to guess from just uh, this diagram the diagram is helps you to kind of guess some of the aspects but the rest of the thing can be read from the uh, uh, so read from the data sheet of the microprocessor so there is there is this other kind of a register which is typically will be there now it will have this uh, um, you know memory address holding register from that register that address can come on the address bus and that particular par, uh, like uh, uh, location in the memory will get addressed okay so uh, so this, this is some kind of a description or understanding of this diagram okay so you can pause it and read through and uh, understand little better if it if at all you need to be so uh, now the, the the there are some questions that we can raise now okay um so so uh so 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 these are like uh, some some kind of a special registers and how these registers would work is what is uh, um, get gotten here so we don't worry about so what we want here is a uh, special functionality to uh, this register we want the data from the data bus transfer to ma okay so some data from the data bus can be transferred to this register okay but you cannot read and transfer any data from this register back to the data bus okay um uh, and that that uh, that data will be transferred to the uh, address bus when the output enable is is uh, so this functionality is is needed uh, can you guess what this functionality is needed see we have written some kind of a program and some memory locations okay so uh, when we execute we need to give microprocessor uh, uh, a location from where you want to execute that location when you give that location will be the starting point for this uh, memory address register to hold okay and that address will be there on the address bus and then uh, that address can be transferred to the address bus and then uh, your your um, you know your, your address bus is pointing to that particular location where your program is written in the memory and now that per first command that you have written uh, the pro the program that can be now fetched from from this data bus uh, uh, fetched from this memory and gotten onto data bus and transferred to this uh, instruction register okay ir these are the so this this resources you will typically not see uh, for a user to be accessed okay so yeah, we are giving this uh, here to just to give you some glimpse of how things are happening inside okay 
So, this uh, register you will not be able to see or um, you know many times they will not even kind of put them in the in the architecture okay? because the user is not concerned with those registers uh, too much. Okay? So, uh, now the question is uh, um, we, we, we would like to have this facility okay, to code our program and that, that uh, say, say some, some instructions are written some memory locations and uh, we would like to have uh, these instructions to be fetched as I said from the memory and uh, given to this register IR and now from IR like you know, they will be taken and executed in some way. Okay. So, uh, let us uh, see that uh, how, how things happen a little bit um, in more detail. Hmm. Uh, the, the say say program counter is holding first memory location and uh, so this program counter if you see is, is, is maybe here you can see. Uh, so, so program counter is holding that um, uh, you know first memory location. Okay. So, that uh, program counter will be now holding the uh, starting point. Okay. That starting point address will be transferred to the data bus from there it should be getting to the memory address register and then it will be available on the address bus. The moment this is executed then second address so this program counter will update uh, like you know it, it increment by 1 and then second memory address will be there here. Then again it will be taken here from here it will be transferred to this and again it will be executed or this uh, it is be addressed and uh, then the, uh, the, the second line of your command okay, or program will be uh, second command of your program will be transferred to the instruction register and then it is executed like that is this, this, this sequence will continue uh, further. Okay. So, so, now uh, <coughs> We will now create this kind of a brief uh, notion for the for the instruction. So PC to MA. Okay, what we, what is means like you no know, contents of this register PC are transferred to MA. So so for that lot of operations are to be done. Okay, before so so the way we said okay external um, location some uh, um, you know some uh, data hold in external location to be transferred to the memory. Now this is just a transfer from one memory uh, one register to other register. There is no memory involved here. Okay, so so program counter transfer some uh, uh, you know data to memory register. Okay, so uh, so we we now see that okay this this uh, uh, other instruction that we want to see that memory uh, address will be um, uh, given by this program counter register which is now uh, holding the memory address that uh, is pointing to some memory location and the data from that memory location needs to be fetched and transferred to the IR register. So, this this will indicate uh, briefly as you no know, m is for stands for memory, memory which is uh, uh, like you no know, pointing uh, pointed by this memory address register that particular kind of a uh, uh, location uh, whatever is there is 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 to be transferred to IR register. Okay. This is how we represent this uh, small small commands and then PC is, is incremented. Okay. So, program counter needs to get in incremented. Okay. So, these are like uh, you know small small uh, brief uh, briefly we write these commands okay. and um, now we we, we do not worry about how like you know this uh, this will happen actually. So, let us kind of uh, skip through this part uh, how the program uh, counter is function to, 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 to do some, some things that are described. Okay. So, let us not worry about this part uh, here this is more like a how do you digital circuit uh, we will design about, about that. Okay. So, these are more details about how the program counter is, is uh, made to function the way it is uh, there. Okay. So, um, so, so these are uh, the operations that we said it should happen. So, program counter content should go to memory address uh, register and then whatever is addressed by that register to the memory that location of the memory uh, we, we contents of that location in the memory we transfer to IR register and then we update this. These are the, this is a sequence of operation should happen every single command that we execute. Okay. So, uh, irrespective of any additional operations that are to be done. Okay. And then um, 
we can have these additional operations that move B to A or some, some kind of add, uh, operations that we, we can add to this sequence. Okay. And uh, now we want this thing to be executed uh, in, in some kind of a way that, uh, by using this, uh, you know, some kind of combination of the states or combination of the, uh, you know, some of these, these, these each of these can be uh, designated as a, as a state. Okay. So, so we will see how this operation can be executed in a, in a, so this is a example of another kind of a command. Okay. So, this is, uh, so these three are common and then now contents of A are to be trans transferred to B to AL register, contents of B are to be transferred to the T register and A should again hold the addition of AL and T which is given by ALU arithmetic logic unit. So, this is another command that we have built up. Okay. So, we are, we are kind of building these commands now. Okay. This is command 1 where like you know this uh, just move, moving of uh, contents of A from uh, con uh, register A to B happens and then like you know, this is a second command. Okay. So, 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 we want to see like how these commands can be finally executed. Okay. So, we, we uh, create this kind of a you know um, table in which like you know we have this uh, commands which are now called mnemonic. Okay. So, these are like a assembly language kind of a uh, commands. Okay. So, typically this is a way this is a syntax that will be used in the assembly language for for moving some data from one register to other register, add uh, something to the register like that, you will have these different different kind of uh, commands that will be possible. Okay. So, uh, say for this first command, we want like you know this, uh, uh, this is a like you know micro instructions that are called. So, whatever this we say okay, PC to MA, you know this is a micro instruction. Mm. So, these micro instructions are typically which are which can be completed in one kind of a clock cycle. Okay, and uh, you you have like you no know, second instruction, say, say micro instruction, third micro instruction, like that. Three micro instructions are re required for uh, executing this one single command. Okay, so this is your command, and then there'll be some code associated with that command. Okay, so we don't need to worry about this code here. Okay, this code will be used by this IR register to actually execute this sequence of things. And how that happens, we'll get some glimpse of it, but we'll will 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 not get into too many details about it okay so so these are the three kind of a operations to be happening uh, one after other for a first command like that you can have the second command operations okay and uh, the the what it does here result hmm? and its code so so typically these are the uh, things involved in in every of your instruction set so this this assembly language is is one of the fundamental kind of a language for the instruction, your each microcontroller will have its own instruction set and it will produce some kind of a instructions uh, or some commands it will be mentioned there and uh, that these commands will get executed by using this kind of a micro instructions typically. Okay. So, so we are just getting a, a small glimpse of, of that. Okay. So, this is a second command uh, that we have generated then some kind of a third command I am generating here. So, we will not get into too many details about how these commands are, how, what are these operations and things like that. What we want to see is that every command that or every uh, instruction that is issued in microcontroller uh, or microprocessor will have this some set of uh, micro instructions to be executed and they are, they are executed by using some kind of a timing and control unit. Okay. So, all these micro instructions together, you can see that uh, we we want now uh, only like you no know, we'll add this S1, S2, S3. We have said here, but S1, S2 are common because these micro instructions are common. But S4, S5, S6 are new kind of a micro instructions. Like that, uh, you'll identify like you no know, every command, whatever you want to uh, want the operations to happen for that command. Uh, you know, we will uh, add these uh, micro instructions uh, to the set. And all these micro instructions form like you know this distinct kind of operations that are to be performed. And now these operations can be say say up to here, here when we come there are 11 kind of uh, states that, that we get uh, distinctly here. Okay. So, these 11 things uh, these are like uh, remember these are to be uh, executed in one clock cycle kind of a thing the way we had executed S1, S2, S3, S4 in our previous example. 
the same way this will happen now the logic will be little more complicated and, and more involved ok. So, uh, we will just get a small glimpse of that. So, these are like 11 kind of a distinct operation which are kind of called the states here. And now, we want to have these uh, states executed in a, in a one per particular kind of a way uh, when uh, command 1 or command 2 is issued ok. So, we have these 4 commands that are defined for this uh, microcontroller and uh, uh, we want to execute uh, whatever commands that is written by the by the programmer ok. So, but then there is a, when they when this command is issued then this this operation should happen is what we want to make sure. So, we start generating a state diagram which is now dependent upon the uh, the instructions uh, that that uh, that are there four instructions that we have. So, so S 0 S 1 S 2 uh, will be instructed it will be executed uh, anyhow ok. Then S 3 will be done only when the, the command issued has uh, some particular format or this is a command which is uh, having code 0 0 ok. So, we start drawing this kind of a a state diagram from here saying that ok S 1, S 2, S 3 are same states I will go from S 0 to S 1 to S 2 and then I will go to go to S 3 only when I r is equal to something ok. Like that we will start drawing the complete state diagram and then uh, we, we will start connecting the signals ok. Uh, so, so, this signal connection again can be uh, seen in a in a way that uh, you know you want to have these operations to be done. Okay. So, this is uh, kind of very easy as uh, as similar to what your previous example ok. So, we have the signal connections uh, signal the states identified and for each of the states now we will do this kind of a um, uh, signals connection to to do this task ok. So, now um, uh, whenever like you know uh, this S 1 S 0 goes high this part will happen when S 2 goes high for example, this part will happen ok that is uh, going to happen you can check it here ok. So, so one can construct that uh, very easily and then what we want here is now the, the loop the state diagram to be generated for these uh, instructions to happen ok. So, say for example, S 2 when this happens like you know this S 2 is here, S 2 is here, S 2 is here you can see that you know this this uh, this will get executed when S 2 is go going high. Okay, so, so what we have done is so far is identified these states and each of the states when it is to be um, uh, executed what is to go high and low in the in this connection we have done and now we, we, we will see what is uh, how it is to be executed ok. So, so for that we, we saw like you know we will use this kind of a timing uh, and control unit here. So, we had previous unit where which is which has simply to go through S 1, S 2, S 3, S 4 that is it. But now here we, we want to have this control be given by this uh, IR register as I was saying before that ok S 1, S 2, S 0, S 1, S 2 are executed anyhow, but S 3 we should go only when IR has something ok IR. So, so, so we start writing a, it as a state diagram ok. Uh, you remember our sequential logic we developed by using state diagram. So, this is how we develop this diagram ok. So, uh, when I r is this from 2 you go to 3 ok and then like you no know, you go, go back from from otherwise uh, uh, like you no know, for this I r if is something else you go through these different states then again like you no know, you have some some kind of a way. This is like a, you, you get this uh, sequential logic diagram done and then you can execute this logic by using your uh, you know. Uh, uh, so, each of these uh, states will have one um, uh, D flip flop selected and we can start connecting things together and we add on with the D flip flops uh, some more kind of a uh, uh, logic elements to, to get this executed. So, I will not get into details of that again we will just directly uh, see the see the final result here ok. So, you can pause and go through some of these things more detail if you want to later ok. So, uh, this is how this final circuit is going to look like ok. So, so this we, we generate depend upon instruction we use decode the instruction and get say this this pins high and when these pins are high then like you know the, the sequence of operation is going to run according to the uh, state diagram that uh, we have seen ok. So, this is like a complete picture of this stuff ok. 
this is not typically uh, you will not get to see this in the microprocessor data sheet. What you will see is only the architecture that okay, this has these registers and these registers have this functionality. How it happens, uh, you know, you do not have to bother about. So, this is like a complete picture of, uh, of a typical microcontroller uh, execution operation execution that happens in the in the microcontroller. And of course, there will be then lot of other facilities you can have additional registers put together for um, getting these for loops, while loops and then storing something for temporary that uh, you know stack and other kind of uh, registers can be introduced. So, so once you have this base understanding of uh, how things are happening, then all the other things can be imagined very nicely uh, how they, they would have been happening there. Okay. So, um, uh, so this is just a summary of uh, this uh, whole thing, uh, whole process of this uh, you know four lectures on uh, microprocessor that we have done to get all the basics uh, very very nicely understood here. And um, uh, this understanding will help you read through the data sheets of microprocessor very easily. So, so we have this uh, these instructions. These are called typically assembly language in instructions. Okay, and each of these instructions will consist of several micro instructions. And each micro instructions will will tell you okay that much time will be taken for. Uh, so, so if you have three micro instructions to run these, then three clock cycles will be needed to execute these. So you can get also some sense of how much time will be taken to execute my my command. Okay, and this machine language or assembly language is is what is called this instruction set is uh, termed as. Okay, and and this is how let's like, see you write a program in C or any other language. You know, uh, it is getting when it compiles. Okay, what that compiler does is basically converts all your higher language stuff into this uh, assembly language uh, instructions and and then executes that uh, assembly language instruction the way we saw uh, they get executed by using the timing and control unit. Okay, so this that is how like uh, things uh, happen typically in the microprocessor. Okay, so, uh, we will stop here for now.